what this means. And one of the areas that, are, that you are moving their foot from the accelerated brake are the LNG projects. And these are big moats. These are technical economic terms. Okay? <laughs> All right, so what, what, what we got here, we have got $70 billion in LNG projects. As it turns out, only two of them have gone vertical so far. They are big suckers of $30 billion. But what's going on with these folks here? Let me, let me show you why they have it, just have it put on the accelerator and pressing down on it. Let me show you why here. Let's kind of work through the math. Uh, suppose you're going to buy, so you're an Asian firm, you're going to buy LNG from somebody. One of the somebody's could be Katayner or Russia or somebody like that selling LNG, and they price it off the price of oil. So they take about 15%, let's say, of the price of oil. They're going to charge $15 per million BTU. On the other hand, what is Chenier going to do? Or, or Semper going to do? What are they, what are they going to do? They're going to take the Henry Hub price, which about, let's say it's $350. They are going to charge, what have they got? They've got plants here where they're going to have to bring the natural gas in here and convert that natural gas into LNG and get to 1 600th of its volume. Well, it costs something to just run those. So they're going to charge 53 cents for just the cost of running that. And then it costs them 20 billion to build this sucker. They got to get their money back for that. So there's a 350 charge for capital recovery. And then they got to transport it to Asia. So their total cost is going to be nine dollars and fifty-three cents. Boom! <clears throat> we're going to win here because they're charging 15 and we're charging 9.53. Boom! We've got a major competitive advantage when the price of oil is 100. But when the price of oil is just 60. <clears throat> Look what happens. We're still pricing at 9.53. They're taking 15% of 60. We got nine dollars. And for the LNG export facilities, competitive advantage is gone. Okay. Now the good news is, if the, if the announced group has in their hip pockets contracts, 20-year contracts with foreigners to buy their product, they're okay. But if you're one of those down the line who may not have a contract in your hand, okay, then, it's, then, then that starts to become a little bit iffy, doesn't it? Now, what's the general chemical plants too? There's two ways to make ethylene. I think I mentioned this to you last year. One way is what we do in the United States. Uh, we take natural gas, we convert it into ethylene, ethane, and now that we make ethylene, which goes into production of all the you know, plastic stuff that you use. But if you are in Europe, you're going to take oil, and out of oil, make naphtha, and out of naphtha, make the, uh, the ethylene. Well, when the price of oil is 100, the price of natural gas is 3 here, there's no way they can make ethylene as cheap as we can. But, I mean, you got to remember the oil to gas price ratio. Basically, when the price of oil, the price of natural gas differ by factor of 7, they're equal to BTU content. So the price of natural gas is 3, price of oil is 27, that's where I got that number a while ago. <clears throat> then they're equal, there's, there's no competitive advantage. Well, what has been happening is that young price of oil has been coming down, and that's causing people to say, how much darn further can it go? I better move my foot off that accelerator. <coughs> Think about this, see where it's going to settle down. Now, I'm going to skip this little part here. The other thing is the GTL plants, the people who said, hey, we figured out a way to take natural gas into this end, and out of the other end, make gasoline or diesel. Well, the Shell, the Shell DTL plant has been totally canceled over in the Baton Rouge area, over in the Ascension Parish area. And they said, you know, the primary reason for this is we're not worried about the price of natural gas. We're worried about the price of oil. If it comes down to 27, you know, we got no advantage there. As you know, Sasol has delayed <coughs> their GTL plant. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. What are they looking at? The G2X facility, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more going forward. Uh, we'll, uh, let me just kind of put off for now. I've got a question mark there. I'll explain that question mark in a second. So you're seeing some switch from the accelerator <coughs> to tapping on the brake. Oh, yeah. So you all okay here? You just kind of see what's going on here? Good. I'll, I want you to make sure you fully understand what's going on. Uh, how many people in this room know who Johnny Mathis is? All right, young people, look around. Look at the people who raise their hand. Okay. Oh, I got the court. Wanda Faye West, Johnny Mathis. Oh, great. Love song. He came to Baton Rouge this past, uh, about four months ago. Peggy and I got tickets. I gave you some tickets to the two kids who live next door. Got really good tickets down about the second or third row. And I asked him, how, how, 
did you like the concert? Oh, he was, he was good. He was nice. Very pretty, very pretty song. See, at one point, we turned around and looked backwards like this, and we saw what looked like hundreds of little lights. And at first, we thought people were holding up their cigarette lighters. And then we realized it was the reflection of the lights above everybody's glasses. <laughs> <laughs> 